Hey, this is Mr. Janes. In this video, we're going to be going over IXL K5, giving some tips on how to do it. Uh, so make sure you've logged into IXL, make sure you've put in your username and password so that it records your score. And we're going to go into K5, SSS, SAS, ASA, and AAS theorems. And let's hop right in. So every single one of these, um, these questions deals with triangle congruence. And there are four triangle congruence shortcuts that we've learned side, side, side angle, angle, side, angle, side, angle, and side, angle, side. So what we're going to do is look at the two triangles and see if they fit any of these four conditions. And if not, then, um, then the triangles cannot be proved congruent. So this first one here, we've got a pair of congruent sides, right? PQ is congruent to UT. We've got a pair of congruent sides. PS is congruent to TV. Um, but that's about it. Let's write that down. We've got one side and another, another pair of sides. So we've got two pairs of congruent sides but that does not fit any of these four conditions, so our answer will be none of the above. We do not have enough information to show these two triangles were congruent. This next one, let's see what we've got here. Angle S is congruent to angle N. Angle T is congruent to angle P, again, but they both have two tick marks. And U is congruent to angle Q, they both have three tick marks. And so we've got angle, angle, angle congruence. Now, again, none of these are angle, angle, angle. They all involve some sort of side, and we've got no congruent sides here. So, again, none of the above. The triangles cannot be proved congruent. Taking a look at this one, we have S, angle S is congruent to angle U. Uh, we've, so that's an angle, put that right there. We've got that um, this side is congruent to this side, so that's a side. And there's nothing else marked. But since this side, QT, is shared between these two triangles, uh, then we can mark it congruent. Right? I'll put two tick marks there. Right? QT is the, of this triangle is congruent to QT of this other triangle. So that's another congruent side. And so it's angle, side, side, or we can mark that as side, side, angle. And that is not one of our congruence uh, shortcuts, our congruence theorem. So this will be none of the above. Now, some people like to look at this and say, well, OK. You've got a side, an angle, and a side. So wouldn't that be side, angle, side, right? That's not true. Because when we write side, angle, side, and put the A in the middle of the two S's, that indicates that the angle, in this case, angle S, is in the middle of the two sides. And it is not. For the angle to be between those two sides, the angle have to be right here. And this could be side the angle, and the other side, right? But since the side is over here, it is not at the, the intersection or the vertex of those two congruent sides. Uh, it will not be side, angle, side, and it will be angle, side, side, or side, side, angle. None of the above. Taking a look at this one, uh, again, we've got a pair of congruent sides. All right, angle, oh, sorry, pair of congruent angles, angle S and angle P. We've got a pair of congruent sides, side PN and SN. And we can also label that this angle here and this angle here are congruent because they are vertical angles, and we know vertical angles are always congruent. So in this case, we've got an angle here, a side here, and an angle there. So that is angle, side, angle. Again, notice how the side right here is between the two angles. So that is angle, side, angle. All right. Let's take a look at this one. So we've again got an angle congruent to this angle. We've got this angle congruent to this angle. And we can mark that this side is congruent to itself. Again, that's a reflexive side or a, a shared side between these two triangles. So we look at this, and we would call this angle side angle, because we've got an angle. A side in between those two angles. Notice how the side touches both of the angles and the last angle, angle side angle. And that is one of our, our um, reasons or rules to explain why those two triangles are congruent. Over here, again, we've got angle, side, angle. Okay, angle, side, angle. Again, with the side in between these two angles. Now, if you look back at the last three problems, okay, this one, angle, side, angle, this one, also angle, side, angle, and this third one, also angle, side, angle. The point of this is to show you that it does not matter 
what the figure looks like, right? It can look like this, kind of like a, a bow tie. It can have a shared side. Or the triangles can be completely separate. It doesn't matter. It can still all be angle side angle. Or they could be different. What does matter is the, the congruence markings or the tick marks. Things like this right here, this right there, right? These are the markings that matter. The shared side matters. But just because you've got a figure that looks maybe like this, doesn't mean it's always going to be angle side angle, as we'll see later on. So how the diagram looks actually doesn't matter. It's all about the congruence markings. Taking a look at this problem, now um, let's see. We've got this shared side here, so I'm going to mark that right away. We've got an angle that goes with this angle, and we've got another angle here that's congruent to this angle here. All right. Well, you might be tempted to say, right, just like before, um, s angle, side, angle, because we've got one angle here, a side, another angle. But you would be incorrect, okay? When you're looking at this, you have to make sure you only deal with one triangle at a time. So when we look at this, if I say that I'm using this angle, this side, and this angle, that's wrong, because this angle and this angle are on two different triangles, right? The top triangle and the bottom triangle. What we've got to do instead is only look at um, the, the first triangle. So angle, angle, side. Notice how the side is not between the two angles. It would have to be over here for it to be between, but it's not. So it's not going to be angle, side, angle. It's going to be angle, angle, side, or side, angle, angle. They mean the same thing. As long as the S is not between the two A's, because the side is not between the two angles of the same triangle. So it will be angle, angle, side. Now we're just checking to see if the two triangles are congruent. To do that, we have to remember is the four congruence shortcuts or rules that we have. We have side, side, side. We have side, angle, side. We have angle, side, angle. And we have angle, angle, side, also known as side, angle, angle. Same thing. If we've got enough information to use one of these, then the triangles are congruent. If we don't have enough information, the triangles are not congruent. Looking at the first example we have here, we've got a pair of congruent sides, another pair of congruent, oops, another pair of congruent sides, and another pair of congruent sides. So that is going to fit side, side, side right there, and the two triangles are congruent. That's a yes. Next up, let's look at this one. We've got uh, a pair of congruent sides, a pair of congruent angles, and another pair of congruent angles. And notice how the congruent side right here is not between the two angles. That means we're going to have angle, angle, side, or side, angle, angle, right? In either case, the side is not between the two angles, but that's okay because this is still uh, one of our congruence rules or shortcuts. So that's a yes. Those are congruent. Lastly, we look here. Um, I'll label this middle side, this reflexive or shared side. Um, and you look at this and you say, okay, well, there's two sides and this angle. And so, hey, side, angle, side, that shows the two triangles are congruent, right? But you've got to watch out. This is not side, angle, side. When you look at this, side, angle, side would mean that the angle is in between the two sides. When we look at one triangle, so just ignore this triangle for a second, ignore everything over here. When we look at this one triangle over here. We notice that we've got a side, another side, but the angle is not between the two sides. If the angle were between the two sides, it would have to be over here. But actually, it's not. It's not the case at all. The angle is outside of those two sides. So this is going to be angle, side, side, or side, side, angle congruence. And we know that this is not a form of tri triangle congruence. We do not have enough information to show those two triangles are congruent. And so we'll mark no. If we had more information, for example, if maybe this was marked on both triangles, then we would say yes. Or, for example, if we had this side over here, right, we would say yes. But since none of that information is given to us, we have to say no. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, this is going to be the end of this video. Uh, if it helped you to see the diagram marked on your computer screen, I highly suggest getting out a dry erase marker and marking it yourself on the screen of your laptop and then erasing it when you're done. Feel free to ask questions, uh, and I hope you're successful with IXL K5.